Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to my first podcast. I'm Rodrigo Delpech, your host. So I had a different plan for my first podcast. I was going to talk about myself, give you a little background, who I am, how did I get here. I live in Las Vegas right now, what I've been doing uh, since I started in the bartending industry. But due to uh, certain events happening worldwide, like the COVID-19 quarantine, uh, I decided to go on a different route. So I'm going to leave that for later and explain and tell you a little bit about myself later on. Um, what I'm going to say about me is I've been a bartender for 22 years. I've been a flair bartender for about the same time. And I've been competing since since then. One of the issues that I want to talk about today is the USBG. So we go a little bit back and I've been a member for quite a few years, four or five years. I've been trying to do the flare competitions that they organize every year to try to go represent USA in the World Finals IBA. And uh, a couple of times, uh, most of the times, I got into the competition. And once I didn't get picked to get a chance to qualify for it. So the process that they had was very catchy, in, in my opinion, right? Because... So you had to send a video of you doing flair, which is a flair competition. So I get it. It is also a bartending competition. It's you got to make a cocktail. So you had to make, send a recipe of a cocktail uh, of a creation. And then you had to write an essay. Now, can you explain to me why you got to write an essay saying that you deserve to do you, you deserve a spot and what are you going to do with that essay when you go compete against the best flare bartenders in the world in my opinion nothing with an essay you don't do anything in fact there you don't need to speak the language to go compete when you go there they speak many different languages. So why do you want, I get it. You want to, whoever is going to go represent USA. They got to speak English, which I get it. And I wasn't against that, even though I don't agree. I honestly think that it's pointless. You got to go by the rules, pretty much. So... I wrote, they never say, they never use the word essay. They never explain what they wanted. They just say briefly, tell me why, without telling me your name, why do you think you deserve a spot? And so I did. And then later on, I find out that they say my essay was weak. I'm like, what essay? I did have the applications and uh, like in every form, it didn't say anything about an essay. So I never talk about this because when it, it, it was something personal, right? And I didn't want to go and make it public. My friends knew we talk about with my friends and colleagues, but nothing national because there's no point. It's my fight, if you want to call it in a way. But I didn't want to involve anybody. It's just my thing. But now, with the COVID-19, it makes it national because there are a lot of donations. Brands are donating money so they can help bartenders and servers to get through this difficult time. So that's why I decided to to talk about this. With that being said, 
one of my questions is who's in charge of dividing the funds? I really don't know. I watch a video of them explaining what do they do with the money, uh, what's the process, but I don't know who's qualified to decide who gets the help and who doesn't. So I have here the application and it's for me in the process when they do the screening how do this how do you decide who gets the money and who doesn't right you gotta write your name your phone number for whom are you filing uh this grant application your address are you applying for the COVID 19 date of, of birth um you gotta send uh, an image of your ID, employment history, then you gotta tell them what you do, bartender, server, barback manager, etc. Legal name of, of employer, name of employer, uh, DBA, name of employer, address of business, uh, their phone number, supervisor name, and then upload Proof of employment, W-2, pay stub, offer letter, etc. Have you been employed uh, for more than 12 months? That's one of the things that makes you qualified. You gotta be, you had to be working at that place for more than 12 months. Uh, how many years have you worked in the hospitality industry? And then when you go to the household profile, What's your income? Uh, they ask to upload the recent tax return, then the household size, the number of dependents, and that's it. So this application, it's a little bit bigger than uh, the one that I filled if I'm not mistaken, I did it uh, probably like three weeks ago. And based on this application, I really don't understand how they can say you qualify and you don't. The money donated from this brand, they're to help every person in the industry, not for them to be like, well, you get money, you don't get money. I do understand that some people need more help than others, 100%, but I just, in my opinion, they're not qualified to decide who gets money and who doesn't. So I'm gonna go in, like, for example, I don't think they can check your credit they cannot check your bank account. They can check where you're working. But now, when you go, when you put that, put that in, have that in mind, they check where you work. So now, uh, which I'm gonna connect it with who is in charge, they have 475 volunteers. They're, they're all members of the USBG. So, it's a little bit, it's not really objective when there might be somebody that knows somebody. So if I go, let's say they go and open the application, they're like, oh, look, it's this guy, it's that girl. She works at the best nightclub in Vegas. Oh, that guy works in the best hotel in Miami. They don't need money. How do they know? They don't know. They don't know if you need money or not, regardless of where you work. So that's why it makes it difficult to go and do that screening. They say that they train these volunteers. How did they train them? For how long? 
it's I know it's a difficult process. I know that there is people that are gonna get money. Some people they're not gonna get money. I do understand that. But for example, um, I know that it's taking a little bit longer for the process. I understand there's been almost 300,000 applications and there is only 475 people working on it. I completely understand, but that's why it makes it so difficult because there is only less than 500 people working to review that many applications and they gotta make a call and say, you, you get help, you don't. When I use an example, I did apply. I applied with somebody else. We wrote the exact same thing. Same income, uh, same expenses, same hardship, everything the same. I got denied and the other person moved to the second phase. So how the they decide and they're like that person is denied and that person deserves help when we both wrote the same you tell me i don't know how they did it but you tell me um i know i've been talking to quite a few people like i said before uh colleagues around the states and i only heard of one person that say they got money everybody else says they got denied they didn't hear anything and some of them they moved on to the second phase now with the second phase they say they're gonna get between $150 and $500 so with those there's uh, a bunch of those people they're like man all this process to get $150 is not worth my time. Okay, so where is that money going if they don't uh, if they don't get they they don't go and apply for the second phase, right? It's just is it going to people that they were denied and they're like, hey, you know what? We're gonna give you a second second chance, or the other people get more. Now, when they were talking on and explaining on the video, they they could say how much money they got so far, but they couldn't tell us how much money went out so far. So you tell me that you can see the balance when you get the money, but you cannot see the balance of how much it went out. Weird, right? So... Uh, you know, in my opinion, there's always, there's, uh, in a better situation than you financially and, you know, somebody's worst. Now, how do you decide who is in a better situation and who's in a worse situation? Because again, based on a, on an application like this, you can decide who, who needs help and who doesn't. It's it's disappointing sometimes because every time the, the USBG is put on a spot, there is not transparency. There are a lot of things that they cannot explain. Uh, one thing that I saw when I was uh, watching the video of them explaining is the way she explained things at the beginning. It was very condescending. Uh, not humanitarian whatsoever. She was pretty much like, if your hardship is simply you're out of work, there's a lot of people hire. Go get a job. You don't say that to somebody in need. You got to be careful what you say and how you say it. You can't go and just, hey, go get a job. It's not that easy. It sounds easy, yes. A lot of people from the industry, like they, they are hiring in different places for sure. But you need training 
in everything you're going to do. Anything you're going to do, you got to go and train for it. If you put an ex- if you use an example, when you're working behind the bar and you get somebody that like, hey, I have no experience whatsoever. I want to bartend. You got to go and train them. You got to show them the way. In Vegas, they got to go and take a class before they can bartend in a, in a union place. So it's the same if you're going to go and, and apply for another job. It's not that simple. You got to be careful. You know, when you go and explain things and it's not, people are going through a lot for them to hear, hey, if you just lost your, lost your job, just go get another one. But, and then coming from them, just because they have the power, they have the money, it's not really right to go and say that the way they uh, said it. Then you got to be careful when you compare hardships. You know, it's not based on family size. It's not, uh, it doesn't matter the marital status or gender because... Uh, for example, I know a uh, man that it's paying child support. He doesn't qualify for unemployment and he's struggling with work because everything is closing down or closed already. So he has to go and pay child support no matter what. His ex, he's getting, uh, she's getting that money from child support and she's working so when she explained on this video a uh, there are people you know your hardship is if you just lost your job well you gotta think you know are you a single mother are you sick are you recovering from injuries it's a little bit more complex than that it's not that easy Hey, you just lost your job, but you're single and you're a guy and you're single, you're fine. No, you're not. You don't know the story behind. And that's why I think that this application, and I get it, is a screening. And then you move on to a second phase. And then I'm sure you got to go and they're going to expl- ask way more questions. But if you don't have all the facts right away, you might say no to somebody that really needs the money. They they got six million dollars, six and a half million dollars. I was just checking today on the website, and say around three hundred thousand applications. So their goal is to give to each person that gets the money three hundred dollars. So that means that around 20,000 people will get money. 280,000, you're out of luck. So again, how can you decide and say, well, it's unfortunate that a lot of people are not going to get money, but, you know, it's not. Why somebody that... In, in my opinion, they're not qualified. They're just, I appreciate their help, their volunteers, but not everybody's trained to make that call in such a short time, you know? So it's, I don't know. It, and I know I've been reading, I've been talking, like I say, with people, and a lot of them, they're like, it's a scam. They got to start an investigation. There are a lot of things that they're not very clear. And that's the reason why I was explaining the flare side of it. Because in such a small thing, it's not really transparent. When there's over $6 million involved, it can get catchy, right? So uh, they say too in the video, in order to protect the integrity of the system, they cannot share how they determine who gets the money, which again, 
just like in all the flare comps, they don't share this course because they want to protect the other competitors. Um, they change rules as they go without telling you. You show up and they're like, oh yeah, we changed this. No big deal. It is a big deal. But they feel that they have the power and they can do whatever they want, however they want it. And you either deal with it or you're out of luck. In a simple flare competition where you have 10 competitors, you know, and you don't have different associations running competitions, they're like, well, I got to deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. It's not when it's not fair, it's not fair. But when it comes to a national issue, that's when you are, well, okay, now it, it is a big deal. Now there's a lot of people that they feel they're not being treated correctly. You know, it's only less than 10% that will get that money, the money that brands donated specifically for the industry for this issue, for the COVID-19. So it's just, I, I talk again, like I said before, I talked to people from uh, Alaska. Nobody got anything there. Nashville, nobody got anything. Las Vegas, only one person got money. Florida, they didn't get anything. Uh, it's many different states and nobody got anything. Nobody have hurt on anything of anything. A lot of people, they, they have been denied right away. And I know a lot of people that they need help and they're not getting it. So it's just, it is, it looks catchy. It's not very transparent and people, they're not explaining a hundred percent how things are when it comes to uh, where the money is going <clears throat> and how are dividing the funds. So with that being said, I would say one thing that what I would do in my humble opinion is when it comes to the USBG, you know, you go and when you go and apply before it says all the way to the bottom, apply. But the first thing you say that you see is donate. When it comes to the USBG and based on the experience that I have, my personal experience, I will not go and click donate. I'm not saying that it's wrong to donate. By all means, it's great to help and it's amazing how people are, are helping each other. But in this specific, with this specific uh, subject and the USBG, I would just go and find somebody in need and help them straight. I will not go to them for them to decide who's going to get my donation because I don't think they're qualified and I don't think they do things 100% transparent for you to go and see and be like, hey, yes, I know where this is going. So in my personal opinion, what I would do is, hey, that person needs help, I go and help them. That person, go and help them. Whatever they need, if you can help them with money, with food, with medicine, you know, you don't know, maybe they need you to go and drive and get them the food because they're sick, because they cannot get out of the house, because they're over 60 years old of age and they're at a high risk, then go and, and, and do it. Just my opinion, this is what I do because based on my experience over the years with them, everything looks catchy 
And it's obviously not only me. A lot of people, they have been asking and for answers that they don't get. A lot of people, they think that it's a scam. I don't know. Who knows? But just I hope that everything works out. I hope that we get through this <clears throat> to the COVID-19 and we come back stronger than ever. I'm sure that we will. It's going to take a little bit of time, but I know it's unfortunate that we got to rely on people that you know, you cannot rely on. At least it's just my humble opinion. It's my experience. Uh, and so stay healthy. Stay at home. And be safe. I hope to see you soon. I hope we go back to our normal lives soon enough. So we can just tell the Tell it like a story and, and just something that happened once. So thank you very much again for tuning in and I will see you guys soon. Bye.